Johnny Baseball. Oh, hello. Thanks for tuning in again to another episode of Johnny Baseball. I've gotten some feedback from people that I need to, you know, pick up the pace a little bit, so let's just jump right into it. No, but all in all seriousness, we're gonna really get things going. This is the time of the season now where small sample sizes are a little bigger and if you're somebody like me who likes to make trades all the time, all day, every day, you're probably going to be messaging the other people in your league like, You know who I am? Yes, sir. So you know I'm looking for players. But if you're also like me and you send people so many trade offers that they start to completely ignore you, um, you're going to have to dive a little deeper on that waiver wire to find some sneaky good pickups. So we're going to be looking at a couple guys who I think are being overlooked a bit right now who could give your team a bit of a boost. First up is Andrew Tolles, left fielder for the Los Angeles Dodgers. This is a guy who is a bit of a sleeper coming into the year. Pretty much has the left field job right now, except against lefties. Started off the year kind of slow, but he's been picking it up lately. Uh, the most intriguing thing about this guy so far is that he's been spraying the ball to all fields. He has a really nice K percentage so far this year. Has had a bit of bad luck with balls in play. But something that really piques my inter interest is that in 2013 as a minor leader, he actually stole 62 bases over the course of the season. He stole 23 bases last year and a little over 300 bat at bats in the minors. Uh, he hasn't attempted all that many steals in the majors. I'm not entirely sure why, but this is a guy who has a decent amount of power. He doesn't strike out a ton. Sprays the ball to all fields, which is which bodes well for average and. I think if he does decide to start running at some point here in the majors, you could have a guy who contributes to your team across the board. The one caveat I will say is that Cody Bellinger has been tear tearing it up. Cody Bellinger's tearing it up. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So once Aegon comes back from the disabled list, it's going to be kind of a crunch for playing time. So Tolls might be the odd man out when that happens, but he has been heating up, like I said, over the past week or so. And if he's playing well when Gonzalez is ready, to come back, I think that there's a chance that he sticks in left field. All right, next up is a pitcher for you from the Yankees. Da -na 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 -na. This man's name is Jordan Montgomery. Montgomery is a good example of why it can pay to actually watch these games as opposed to scouting the box score because if you go game by game, he's gotten a bit unlucky in some of these starts. The game against the White Sox where he gave up three runs in six innings, he actually had a shutout through six innings, came out for the seventh, I believe he gave up two hits or hit in a walk and then he gave up a three run bomb to Carlos Sanchez. Another good example of this is the Baltimore start where he gave up three runs in five innings. He actually had given up one run through five innings, came out for the sixth again. Uh, again, gave up a couple of hits, had some men on base, brought in a reliever. Chase Headley made some boneheaded play. I don't remember the specific details of it, obviously, but uh, something to keep in mind, he's been getting a little bit unlucky in some of these games. That being said, he still has a pretty good 3.81 ERA at the moment. For a rookie, he's got a pretty solid ground ball percentage, a really nice 8.26K per nine, which is great. And I think my favorite part about him is he's got four pitches that he throws with regularity. His fastball's not great by velocity, but that's okay because he only throws it 46.2% of the time and the rest of the time he's mixing in his curveball, his cutter, and his changeup and they all seem to be average to above average pitches so when you got four of them and you can mix them in there I think that definitely bodes well for his future. I think he's a really solid pitcher. He had a pretty, he had a pretty impressive outing against the Cubs the other day. I think this is somebody that's definitely going to be able to help you out going forward, especially in deep leagues. Alright, and last up, like a little guy to keep an eye on, Yandy Diaz. I love the name Yandy. Sounds like the name of a little magical elf that lives in the forest, plays the flute. Yandy! Hey guys, it's Yandy! Yandy! Oh, Yandy! Coming through the forest, it's Yandy! So, Yandy Diaz uh, started the year in the majors, filling in for an injured Jason Kipnis. Didn't really impress that much with his overall numbers, 
but there were a couple things that stood out about him, particularly his hard hit percentage and his contact rate. This guy is somebody who has, at least in the minors, uh, elite bat to ball skills and he absolutely crushes the ball when he hits it. And I mean, how can you be that surprised? Look at the way this guy is built. I mean, Jesus, look at that bicep. That bicep looks like what would happen if a snake tried to eat an entire watermelon. Dude is yoked. I think uh, this is somebody who would benefit big time from a change in his swing plane. He already has the elite contact skills, obviously, and if he started hitting the ball away more of an upward angle, started turning some of, a lot of those ground balls into line drives, I think this guy could become an absolute monster, and he has shortstop and third base eligibility. Uh, a lot of his future playing time is going to be dictated on the health of of Michael Brantley and their other outfielders. Brantley apparently twisted his ankle. We'll see how serious it is, but if Yandy is able to get a little bit of playing time and he makes that small change to his swing, I think there's some potential there for a uh, big payoff. So just somebody to keep an eye on. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking me out. Come on back later.